Hello and welcome to CompScience Simplified. In today's video for the JS interview series, we look into event bubbling and capturing and how it all fits together. Let's begin. Before getting into all the details about bubbling and capturing, let's get to know what events are in the first place. In the context of the DOM or the document object model, events serve as a medium for one part of it to communicate with another. Let's say there's a button somewhere on a web page. Whenever a user interacts with it by clicking, hovering, dragging, etc., events are generated. These events can be listened to and changes can be made to other parts of the web page based on what kind of event it was. Basically, an action can be performed upon triggering of the event. Let's take an example to understand all of that. Taking example of an on-click handler in particular. In terms of code, it would generally look something like this. Here, we are telling the web page that whenever someone clicks on this button and event gets generated, run the do something function and pass the event as an argument to it. Post that whatever action that needs to be performed can be performed inside of that function by making use of that event information that got passed to the handler. But it's not as simple as it sounds. There is a minute complication. The web pages that we work with nowadays are quite complex. Let's say that there is a button placed somewhere in there. But then it is quite probable that the button is wrapped inside of a div, which might be logical grouping like a form group or anything else. Also, all this would definitely be enclosed inside of a document tag that wraps the whole page. That means when you are clicking on that button, you are also technically clicking inside of the div as well as any outer layers that are enclosing the button. In other words, you are also clicking the document whenever you click anything on the page. That brings up so many questions. Questions like, if we put handlers on all those entities, would all of them fire? What would the order be in which they get fired? Let's find answers to all of them. To answer the questions that we raised just now, we'll have to look into the concept of event propagation. Let's get right into it. Event propagation is the concept wherein an event propagates all the way from the top, that is the document, to the element that triggered the event, and then all the way back to the document. What this means is, if you put handlers on the document, the div, and the button as in the last example, an on-click event will be triggered on all three of them in a particular order, either from the topmost to the bottommost or the other way around. How does JS decide which way the event propagates? Let's find out. Let us first consider event bubbling, which describes a type of event propagation. In event bubbling, when an event happens on an element, it first runs the handler on it, then on its parent, and then all the way up to the ancestors. So, in this case of our example, they would get fired one after the other starting from the button to the top, that is the document. Almost all events bubble to the top by default, except a few like hover, which means almost all events start from the bottom and make their way up so that we can catch them at the most specific elements first and then move to the generic ones. Also, we can call a method called stop propagation on the event instance that gets passed to the handler. This stops the event from moving on to the next element in the chain and hence stops its propagation. But this is not advised unless you know all the consequences of doing it. This is a good time to talk about event.target. Let's say that we have an on-click handler on the div in the example that we are considering. If, for instance, there were several buttons under that div, how would we know which of those buttons triggered the event? That's where the target property on the event instance comes into the picture. In the onclick handler, the event.target node will point to the button on which the event was actually fired and the event.current target would be that entity in which the event handler is being currently called. The most deeply nested element that caused the event is the target element and is accessible as event.target. This comes in handy when we have a navbar menu and define a common behavior for click on any of the navbar items by writing a click handler on the entire menu and then doing different things 
based on the event dot target. Next up is event capturing. And by now you'd have guessed what that is all about. Event capturing is the phase of event propagation wherein the event starts off firing from the topmost parent and then makes its way to the innermost child. In our example, in the capturing phase, the event would first fire on the document, then the div and finally the button. So in case we were logging the elements inside of the click handler, we would see something like this in the console. Document clicked, div clicked, button clicked. But then how would you make an event fire in the capturing phase and not in the default bubbling phase? It's simple. While adding the event listener, just pass this additional object as the third argument that says capture true. Else, even passing the boolean true as a third argument would do the job and the event handler will then be called in the capturing phase while going top to bottom and not the bubbling phase that is bottom to top. Let's sum it all up so that we can revise what we just learnt. As HTML elements happen to appear nested inside of other elements, events triggered on one element also trigger events on the outer elements. The order in which event gets fired depends on how the event listener was configured. The basic order in which events get fired is first the capturing phase which moves top to bottom firing events registered on all elements specifically to be fired in the capturing phase. Then events defined on the target are fired and then events registered in the bubbling phase are fired which moved from bottom to the top. When we set any handler on any element, it is by default fired in the bubbling phase unless otherwise specified using this flag. In case an event is fired on a parent element, we can get a reference to the actual element that caused the event using the event.target property. Also, further propagation of an event can be stopped by calling the stop propagation method on it, although it is not advised. And that's all there is to know about event propagation in this short lecture. Hope you learned something new today. If you did, feel free to like this video and also check out other videos. Do subscribe to the channel if not done already. And as always, keep smiling, keep learning. See you in the next one. Till then, take care.